Hello, this is Frayne Olson, Crop Economist and Marketing Specialist with NDSU Extension. This is the weekly soybean update for the week of February 25th through March 3rd, 2019. This week, I'll provide a brief update on the status of the current trade negotiations between the United States and China. On Thursday and Friday, February 21st and 22nd, senior U.S. and Chinese negotiators met in Washington, D.C., to continue their discussions attempting to get a trade agreement between the United States and China. Now these talks were actually extended through the weekend, which most traders and analysts viewed as a positive sign that progress was being made. On Wednesday, February 27th, U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer, so Mr. Lighthizer is the chief negotiator on the U.S. side, testified before the U.S. House Ways and Means Committee. And I'd like to take a little bit of time and focus on some of the comments that he made to the House Ways and Means Committee and trying to give some insight into where we are within the trade negotiations and more importantly, what might some of the timeline be for reaching some kind of an agreement. Now, during his testimony, uh, Mr. Lighthizer cautioned that there was still a lot of work that needed to be done before a, a final agreement could be reached. Mr. Lighthizer confirmed that the core issues that remain to be discussed center around intellectual property rights, technology transfer, non-tariff barriers, services, and agriculture. Now, this is the same list of issues that were brought up when President Trump from the United States and President Xi from China sat down face-to-face -face and discussed the trade war that was going on at the G20 summit on the 1st of December. So the issues have not changed. However, recent negotiations have now also included the currency valuation system for the Chinese Yuan. And the concern is that if the United States continues the tariffs, that the Chinese will start adjusting their currency valuations to try and partially compensate for the impact of the tariffs. Now, Mr. Lighthizer also detailed that there was going to be a long road to resolving these issues between the United States and China and said that the tariffs would remain an important tool to push China to make structural policy changes. So this suggests that the United States will continue to use tariffs as a potential lever to make sure that if an agreement is reached, that the Chinese are going to follow through on that agreement. Mr. Lighthizer made several comments that suggest the United States will continue to use the threat of tariffs as a method to ensure the Chinese follow through on any of the terms of the agreements that are, are reached. He did say that there was progress was being made during these trade negotiations, so we are moving forward. However, that the U.S. still needed to be able to use unilateral action to enforce any agreement. His direct quote was, the reality is this is a challenge that will go on for a long, long time and that the U.S. Trade Representative's office was not abandoning the threat of increasing the tariffs on the $200 million worth of Chinese imports to 25% from the current 10%. So again, these tariffs are a method to provide pressure and incentives for both parties to sit down and negotiate an agreement, as well as potentially follow through on those agreement terms. Mr. Lighthizer also made some comments that the U.S. is seeking monthly meetings for the lower level officials, quarterly meetings for vice ministerial level meetings, and semi-annual meetings at the ministerial level or the very highest level of the trade negotiating teams to discuss the monitoring and enforcement of any kind of an agreement. So there would be ongoing considerations as we go through this process of implementing and enforcing any kind of an agreement that's made. Early last week, before the senior U.S. and Chinese trade negotiators sat down on Thursday and Friday, there were some announcements that progress had been made on some agricultural issues as well. In that press release, China had committed to purchase an additional 10 million metric tons of U.S. soybeans. Now that is significant, but let's put this in perspective. When we look back at the Chinese purchases this marketing year, from September 1, when the marketing year begins, through the middle of February, the Chinese have purchased approximately 7.4 million metric tons of U.S. soybeans to date. 
If we were to go back one year ago and we look at the beginning of the marketing year, September 1 of 2017, through the middle of February 2018 as a reference point, the Chinese had purchased 26.2 million metric ton of U.S. soybeans. So again, the commitment to buy additional soybeans from the U.S., 10 million metric ton, is significant, but again, well behind the pace that we saw last year at this time. Now, this also has an important role to play on when do we think we'll get a final agreement? Originally, when President Trump and President Xi met at the G20 summit, March 1 was the hard deadline. Now, more recently, because progress has been made, President Trump has agreed that that March 1 deadline would be rolled back, that there would be an additional time given for negotiators to come up with a finalized deal, and that President Trump and President Xi would likely not schedule any kind of face-to-face -face meeting for an official signing, until late March. Now the timing of any kind of a trade agreement between the United States and China has some pretty large implications for U.S. soybean and U.S. soybean prices. Now this is a chart of U.S. soybean export sales. Again we've looked at this before. This would be sales of U.S. soybeans globally, not just to China. And as you can see we historically have had this very seasonal pattern where our export sales are very, very high during that harvest period, October, November, December, and then start to drop off throughout the rest of the marketing year. The red line, again, that bounces around is the current marketing year, the 2018-19 season. And as you can see, we're well behind our normal pace of exports. Now, I just want to comment the straight line that you see running from about January through the end of February is due to the government shutdown. And so what I did was the export, the total export sales numbers that came out during that time, I divided by the six-week period that the government was shut down, so it becomes kind of a straight line. The moral of the story is we're now reaching some important decision times for the U.S. soybean market. What will happen for export pace from here on forward? And again, as we look at the calendar, that March time period becomes this, this important transition zone between U.S. export sales potentially continuing throughout the rest of the market year or continuing at a higher level, or are they going to drop off and follow that seasonal pattern? So again, the timeline for any agreement is going to be very critical for future U.S. export sales. So let's focus in a little bit more specifically on U.S. export sales into China. This graph shows the accumulated export sales of U.S. soybeans into the Chinese market. And this is accumulated sales, which means that every time we make a sale, we add to this pile of soybeans that's going to be shipped to China. So what we'd like to see is this line grow as quickly as possible or increase as quickly as possible. You'll notice that from October, November, December, that pile of exports continues to grow fairly rapidly. But then as we move into the winter and summer months, the pile of, of exports starts to slow. So there are some sales, but the rate of change, the rate of growth starts to slow up fairly significantly. The red line is the current export sales, accumulated export sales. You'll notice that 2018-19, well behind the normal pace that we typically see. Now, again, this has implications. What will this trade agreement, if we get one between the United States and China, what will that look like? Will there be some requirements that the Chinese continue to purchase U.S. soybeans at a rate similar to what they've done in the past? Or will that, that agreement be silent? What we'd like to see, of course, is the red line and the accumulated sales continue to increase and increase fairly rapidly. We'd like to see that red line reach the levels that we've seen historically by the time we get into that May, June, July, August time period. So once again, I want to emphasize the timing of an agreement and the implementation of that agreement between the United States and China is going to have a pretty significant impact on U.S. soybean prices. So let me provide a very brief recap. We are making progress on a trade agreement between the United States and China. The March 1 deadline for the increase in U.S. tariff rates on Chinese products has been extended. This extension will give both U.S. and Chinese negotiators a little bit more time to finalize an agreement and to focus on enforcement mechanisms. But again, the timing and the structure of that agreement will have pretty significant implications 
for both old crop or 2018 as well as new crop 2019 soybean prices. As we just pointed out, export sales for U.S. soybeans has been relatively slow. We need to try and get U.S. soybeans back into the Chinese market just simply because of the volumes that are involved. Again, the Chinese have agreed to start purchasing additional U.S. soybeans as well as other agricultural products, but they'll likely not do that until after an agreement has been signed. The other thing we got to remember is that the Brazilian soybean harvest is nearly 50% complete. And again, as the Brazilian harvest comes online, they have new crop soybeans that can enter into the world market and provide not only price competition, but also delivery competition for not only Chinese business, but for other countries. So the longer this waits, the more the, the Brazilians are going to be able to have soybeans available to supply world needs. And again, the timing will likely have some impact on 2019 plantings in the United States. The longer this drags out, the more the uncertainty regarding what harvest prices may be, what planted acreage might be, are there going to be shifts between U.S. corn, soybeans, and wheat. Um, this is all up in the air right now. It's being debated and discussed. This concludes this week's update. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions, and thank you for listening.